Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to have served as your sheriff since 2003. Uh, I'm proud of the sheriff's office and the men and women that work there. It's uh, a little bit of history research on the sheriff's office. It's been in existence continuously since 1854, and I'm the 40th sheriff and the 39th person to hold the position. Uh, I'm just, it's, it's an old organization in the county, and I'm uh, just very proud to lead it. Uh, when I first was appointed sheriff by the county council, I uh, had an interim appointment for 11 months before I was elected. We were faced with a number of issues. Growth was a big issue in Whatcom County, and how we were going to ensure there's adequate law enforcement in these rapidly growing areas. And we've taken a more active role. If we're going to allow large growth, particularly residential growth in unincorporated county areas, we're going to have to ensure first that there's adequate public safety resources to, uh, to handle that. And you know, just example, if you go out to Jackson Road and Birch Bay and see the hundreds of new homes coming in, or out in Kendall where someone's requested to put 700 new homes, uh, Sudden Valley uh, with the lots growing out there, it's a huge demand on services. And uh, we've tried to be as fiscally responsible as we can with what we have available. Uh, just a few of the things we did very quickly uh, was the deputies previously came, the patrol deputies, three times a day to the courthouse to change shifts. So three times a day would have been a good time to rob somebody because they're all downtown <laughs> changing shifts. So we've worked out partnerships with the fire districts and they begin and end their shifts in the area where they serve and we get about 90 minutes per day per deputy uh, better uh, efficiency. Uh, we've employed technology and the county executive has been very good in going back to Washington, to D.C. and getting the money we need implement a number of technologies we need that uh, really make our people more available on the street. Uh, we've started a lot of use of volunteers and reserve deputies. We're able to double our cars. So if we have a call, a domestic dispute in Kendall, we don't have to send the Birch Bay deputy up there as often to cover the, the deputy responding because there's a volunteer with a fully trained reserve deputy in the car alongside them. And we'll continue to make those improvements. In the rapidly growing areas, uh, Sutton Valley, Birch Bay, we, they're starting to take on the characteristics of municipalities, and we are not staffed to provide a municipal level of service. So we've assigned neighborhood deputies. We've taken three positions, put one in the Paradise Kendall, one in Birch Bay, one in Sudden Valley. They work a flexible 40-hour week. They're very nimble where they can respond to needs. They get involved with the community. They get involved with the schools. They get involved with the kids. Uh, first year in uh, Paradise, we had a 70% decrease in property crime. Uh, since assigning these deputies. The jail is another big uh, responsibility of the sheriff. We have the only jail in Whatcom County. Uh, several years ago, when I took office, the jail was built for 148 inmates, and we have an average daily population of about 295. The result was there were people that were really dangerous offenders that weren't being held in jail that needed to be there, and there were others not getting booked at all. People with their third and fourth drunk driving arrest with warrants for failing to appear in court, driving around with a can of beer between their legs and a suspended license, they weren't getting into jail. So we went out to the, uh, the community and with the help of this party. We passed a one-tenth of one percent sales tax in 2004 that provided funding for an interim jail work center. We've added 155 beds. Uh, it, it funded the construction, it funded the operation of that center. The, the center was constructed on time and on, on, and on within budget, didn't go over budget. And uh, we've added uh, space for work crews. Not everybody is locked up all the time. We know these folks come back to our community. We have eight work crews that go out every single day. Uh, we do work in this park. I think we do a better job of watering the grass, maybe, but uh, <laughs> uh, we do litter control, we do shrubbery, we do uh, maintenance. We have contracts with the city of Bellingham. And the one I'm most proud of is the one we have with the Uni uh, United States Forest Service for salmon habitat uh, restoration and building trails and making them handicap accessible. Uh, a lot of these folks have never had it. They're 30 years old, some of them have never had a job for more than two weeks in their life. They're unable to get up in the morning. So at least we uh, employ some job skills and good work habits. We're also uh, this month starting a, a employment referral service. We have a lot of people in there. We're being very selective as to who we recommend. Here's somebody that's done a good job, they're a skilled carpenter, or, or they're just a hard worker, they get up in time. 
Uh, let's find them a job when they get out of jail. So hopefully we'll reduce the times, number of times they come back. Uh, we've opened co-located with the jails, a completely different operation under the health department. And with the help of the executive Kremen in getting the grants necessary, we've opened the first mental health triage center co-located with a jail in the state of Washington and probably the United States. I'm getting calls from all over the country asking questions about it. There's a lot of minor offenders that commit minor offenses because of mental health issues that do not need to be in jail. They need to be treated. They can be treated more effectively in the mental health system and we're able to divert them. Our, the choice the deputies had previously, either put them in jail, which doesn't do any good, or take them to the emergency room and babysit them for four or five hours until they can be seen, delay other people trying to get emergency medical care. So it's been a real plus for our community, and I'm really uh, proud of it. The staff there has also helped with the inmates we do have in jail that need mental health services and getting them connected up to uh, other resources in our community when they get released. Now, uh, the third responsibility the Sheriff's Office has is emergency management. And that's been a, uh, a tough one. Our Emergency Operations Center, which is supposed to coordinate all res responses and all assets in the time of a major disaster, uh, was in the basement of the courthouse. Now, you can imagine if we had to call in all the key people, where are they going to find parking? First of all, in the middle of the day in downtown Bellingham. And in the basement of the courthouse, if we have a seismic event, it's very volatile. So again, working with the other resources in the community, we co-located with a fire, an underutilized fire station. We've located there, we have the parking we need available. Uh, the city of Bellingham has gone out on their own. We're trying to coordinate with them so we have a as best unified uh, response we can to uh, disasters and, and other phenomena that might affect us in the United States. You know, we have a large presence of federal law enforcement in Whatcom County. There's over 800 federal law enforcement in this county, which is about four times the number of state and local. And about 80% of the arrests that they make are processed in the local criminal justice system at the expense of the Whatcom County taxpayers. So we're working with the, uh, the federal government. He's been back to Washington, D.C. I had the honor of being invited back by Representative Rick Larson to testify before a House committee on Thursday on this issue, and we're trying to get some funding to at least reimburse us for part of the costs of handling those federal cases here in our uh, local community. Is that the same committee that held that hearing in town in October? No, it was, it was a different subcommittee of the same, none of the same members were on that committee, so, and they had a number of representatives from the southern border there, but we had to remind them we have a northern border too, and that's what Rick was very helpful in uh, doing. So I'm getting the high sign. My time is up. Thank you, and I ask for your uh, vote in November.